Please find a seat. Thank you. I will now call the meeting to order. Uh, please join me in remembrance of the 22nd anniversary of September 11th. I invite everyone to join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I I'd like to announce that the board had an executive session on August 31st at 11 a.m. to discuss pending litigation and also potential purchase of real property. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the August 14th, 2023 meeting? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. The reports. First up is the police. Chief Alexander. Uh, thank you and good evening. For the month of August 2023, the Euclid Township Police Department officers documented 1,066 entries in the police department call reporting system. During the reporting period, the officers issued 154 traffic citations. They investigated 25 motor vehicle crashes and they arrested 17 individuals. Additionally, for the month of August, the department members conducted two motor carrier details at the weigh station, resulting in 506 commercial motor vehicles being weighed six of which were found to be overweight. During the details, the officers also performed five inspections requiring five vehicles and one driver to be placed out of service. The officers were assisted by a member of the Nether Providence Police Department during both details. Sergeant McBride conducted three additional commercial motor vehicle inspections during his normal work days, resulting in one driver being placed out of service. Year to date, the officers have documented 8,982 uh, incidents in our call reporting system. They've arrested 115 individuals. They've issued 1,042 traffic citations, 299 written warnings. They've investigated 221 motor vehicle crashes. And uh, to date, they've uh, weighed 20, or I'm sorry, they've uh, weighed 5,346 commercial motor vehicles. Uh, and I also wanted to report that in August, we did have one Narcan uh, exposure as well. Thank you. Treasurer. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> Through the month of August in the general fund, we've collected just under 84% of our budgeted revenues and have spent just under 65% of our budgeted expend expenditures. Okay. Great. Thank you. Public works, Mr. Greenlee. Yes. Thank you. For the month of August, the daily average flow to the Downingtown treatment plant was 1,499,555 gallons per day, and there were no new connections due to the Darrow or Eagle View wastewater treatment plant. Uh, at the Eagle View wastewater treatment plant, the sludge holding tank was cleaned, and the unused clarifier was pumped down in preparation of some needed tank repairs at Eagle View treatment plant. Uh, weather permitting, the tank repair should be completed by the end of November. Uh, for the month of August, the township received 2.06 inches of rain. Uh, normal for August is about 3.9. We've actually about averaged out for the year. Uh, the department responded to 124 PA1 calls for the month of August and also uh, rebuilt and repaved a large section of Philman and Dallin Forge, uh, the intersection that washed out during our storms in the end of, uh, end of July. Uh, large 
boulders were placed at the sides and end of that road to help prevent potential future runoffs. Uh, the department was also out on August 7th to uh, respond to several reports of downed trees in the area. Uh, trees were cleared from Sharp Lane and Down Forge. Uh, there were also repairs made to storm damaged asphalt on Taylor Road and Wyndham Drive. Uh, the department was also out to repair sinkholes on Peck Road and Beach Street, as well as the department completed all needed truck and equipment maintenance and state inspections for the month. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I just comment that uh, Chairman Bauman and I were happened to be on Filman Road this weekend. It looks really nice. Uh, I think the repairs look really good. Fire Marshal. Um, I'm going to do the fire marshal report tonight. Uh, the building department for the month of August uh, issued 113 permits for construction activities. A total of 145 inspections were conducted. A total of 42 fire code inspections were conducted. 54 use and occupancy certificates were issued, and the fire marshal responded to 26 incidents during working hours and conducted three burning complaints. Okay, thank you. And for the Lionville Fire Company? Uh, Lionville Fire Company responded to 67 incidents during the month of August. Uh, 39 of those were in Euclid, 12 in Upper Euclid, 4 in West Pikeland, and 12 in other municipalities. Uh, the total year-to-date is 459. Thank you. And Euclid Ambulance. Good evening. Uh, Euclid Ambulance for the month of August, we responded to 122 calls within Euclid Township. Year to date, 1,020. Uh, e truck, which was rechassied, is now fully in service, just in time for D truck to be out. Um, it's done. Uh, so we're hoping later this year we'll be able to send one of the other ones out for rechassis. I'm happy to report that we are one EMT shy of being fully staffed with full time employees a tremendous feat from where we were a year ago. Uh, and we really appreciate uh, the support from the community and from the supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the reports as presented? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the board? I just had one comment and question um, for Chief Alexander. Um, am I correct that today is the last day to sign up for Citizens Police Academy? <laughs> Okay. And at the moment, we don't have enough participants that we feel like we can continue on with it for this year. So we're we're looking at the potential for extending it if we possibly can, uh, but we may have to consider waiting until next year again for lack of participation. Okay. Cool. That's all. Thank you. You heard it here for first, folks. <laughs> How do people sign up? Or where can they find a sign up? Do they contact the police department? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yes, if, uh, if folks are interested, uh, they can contact the police department. An application will be sent out to them, and then they will um, communicate directly with Lieutenant Evans, and she will go through the process with them. Uh, again, it's a we believe it's a fantastic program. It certainly gives folks um, a, a clear insight on exactly what we are doing here uh, in our police department in Euclid. And we'll give people a better understanding of what law enforcement really is doing uh, across the county and across the country as well, which we think is really important. Uh, so if anybody is interested, please don't hesitate. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions from the public about the reports? Then I'll go ahead and take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, also, I forgot to mention before we go on, this uh, meeting is being recorded and the meeting will be posted on YouTube. Uh, it's also being held hybrid, and there are people joining us online. Uh, the first item of business is the approval of, for hiring a new police officer. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, and good evening. So, uh, as you know, we have uh, we are aware that we have four officers from our department who are retiring at the end of this calendar year. Uh, with your approval, we began in earnest back in February uh, of this year in uh, listing uh, those jobs and then entering into a hiring process. Uh, we began that testing process in March, and uh, we have three candidates at this point who have made it through uh, in, and they're in varying stages of the process. 
Um, and so we are uh, we are getting very close. Uh, I will be asking for the approval for the hiring of one of those candidates this evening. Uh, for the folks who are in the room tonight, it's a it's a lot to ask of the candidates to engage with us in the process to become a police officer. Uh, we require that they have already been through the academy, that they have one year of experience, and then when they apply and start testing with us, uh, they're required to do a physical fitness test, a national uh, police officer written test. Uh, they do two sets of oral interviews. Some of them are situational. Some of them are to get a better understanding of who the candidate is. Um, once they go through their oral interviews, they uh, are engaged in a uh, thorough background investigation. And then they, they go into a psychological exam. Uh, they do polygraph testing, uh, uh, fitness testing uh, with a doctor and drug testing. And at the culmination of all of that, if we're in a position to do so, uh, then we would hire them with our department. I'm happy to report that uh, one of our candidates who has just, because of the timing of things, gotten through this process uh, to this point, he has completed all of the testing and um, his name is uh, Kai Kennedy Green. He is originally uh, and, and continues to live in Chester County here currently works in Delaware County where he's been employed uh, with a uh, police department there for five years. And uh, we couldn't be happier to have engaged with him in this process. And um, for that reason, I'd like to seek approval from the board this evening to approve the hiring of uh, Kai Kennedy Green with a potential uh, uh, tentative start date of September 25th. Um, again, one of the reasons that we're trying to hire our officers in before the other officers are leaving is because uh, even though they have experience, they have worked elsewhere, they will still need to go through a 12-week uh, field training program with us so that they can learn how we're doing things here. Uh, and then even after they um, are released from that program, uh, they are still on a year of probation as we continue to manage and, and look at, at how they're doing. So uh, again, with that, I can't tell you how much I thank you for engaging with us in this process as well. And uh, with your approval, uh, we would love to ask Kai to come on board. Okay, great, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the hiring of the new police officer, Kai Kennedy Green? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the board? I would just comment that having met Officer Kennedy Green, I'm very excited to welcome him to the Euclid Township Police Department. Absolutely, yeah. I second that. Uh, any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next item of business, consider request for additional contribution to the Euclid Ambulance Company. Does somebody from the ambulance company want to come up and? So as um, Kathy, I think pointed out, did you guys all receive the letter from Kathy? So we are, <laughs> for two months now, we have been without HVAC in half the building. Um, we have started to get um, estimates. We just that alone took uh, a tremendous amount of time. Um, try to get people to come out that wouldn't charge just to look at it. Uh, we are they are recommending that both units be replaced. They're of the same era, um, so we're looking at. Uh, I think the cost they ask for here from Euclid is ten thousand. We've asked all the other supporting townships as well for their uh, portion. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the request for additional contribution in the amount of $10,000 to Euclid Ambulance Company? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Uh, no. No. Nope. Are there any comments or questions from the public? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, item number three, park and recreation recommendation, Bill Labarge from ex officio to voting member. We recently had a member of the Park and Recreation Committee resign, and we'd like to appoint Bill Labarge, who's already on the committee and been going to meetings, and he's in an ex officio position. We'd like to move him to voting member. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? No. No. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, the next item of business is snow contractor bid permission to proceed. Okay. So the bid opening for this was um, September 8th, and that was the second time we went out to bid. 
Um, we again received no bids. So at this time, the township will now reach out to contractors to fill that fill those spots for plowing. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to uh, allow permission to proceed with the snow contractor? So moved. I'll second. Bid without a bid. Any comments or questions? No. Any comments or questions from the public? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next item of business, Ted Jacoma Senior Park Landscaping bid results. So the bid opening for this was September 5th. Um, the township received one bid from KMC Property Maintenance for $35,000. $26,000 of that is for the landscape installation, and $9,000 is the guarantee maintenance allowance. Um, we did receive a letter from Therkoff Design and Planning. Um, they reviewed this bid, and they sent a letter recommending that the board award the contract. Okay, great. Thank you. Can I get a motion to award the bid results of the Ted Jacoma Senior Park Landscaping Plan to, I'm sorry, what was the name of the? The name is KMC Property Maintenance. KMC and Property KMC, Maintenance. They're out of Chester Heights, PA. Okay. Can I get a motion to uh, grant the bid to KMC Property Maintenance for the Ted Jacoma Senior Park Landscaping? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Looking forward to seeing some landscaping at the new senior park. Uh, item number six, the resolution 2023-17, establishing the minimum obligations for pension plans. So this is an administrative resolution that the township passes pretty much every September that identifies the minimum obligations of the township for both our uniform and non-uniform pension. Um, for 2024, the township will be budgeting 539,890 uh, from the state's pension contribution for the police pension plan. Uh, budgeted for 2024, the administrative costs uh, from the police pension in the amount of 49,400, and the minimum obligations for the non-uniform pension plan for 2024 will be uh, 241,500 dollars. Okay, thank you. Can I get a motion to adopt resolution 2023-17, establishing the minimum obligations for pension plans? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from the board? Nope. Any comments or questions from the public? Did I hear a yes? No, was just like oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in that case, I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item of business is the Rossi Track 96 West Devon Drive extension request for preliminary final land development plan. Uh, yes, as you're aware, uh, we had received a land development plan for a shopping center on the Rossi Track, um, which we had until the end of September to make a decision on. Uh, I received a letter from Commonwealth Engineers um, requesting an extension until March 30th, 2024. Uh, so they can explore other options. Okay. Can I get a motion to grant an extension to the property on 96 West Devon Drive, the Rossi track for land development extension? I'll moved. A second. Any comments or questions? No. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item of business is the hearings. I'm going to give it over to Mr. Freed. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we have two hearings tonight. One is a continuation and one is a new hearing. So with regard to the continuation, this is a continuation of a um, rezoning hearing that we uh, commenced at the last Board of Supervisors meeting um, in August. Um, related to Calvary Chapel of Chester Springs at 217, 219, and 221 Dowling Forge Road. Um, the council for um, the church, as well as council for the township, has been um, discussing um, if there's mechanisms that uh, we might be able to, to um, work out so that there's some understanding as to what the proposal will be in the future regarding the area that's being converted from residential to commercial. 
Um, I think the the thought is we should we should at least you know go down that road and have discussions, um, which would require a little bit of time. So I think the plan is to continue the the hearing um, one more meeting um, at least you know till to the to October 9th, um, 2023, at which time we'll recommence the hearing. I know there was potentially one commenter that was only available tonight that we were going to hear from. That's right. One of the neighbors. Good evening. I'm Ari Christakis on behalf of Calvary Chapel, Chester Springs. Uh, one of our neighbors is here tonight, Mr. Myers. Uh, he, he did agree graciously to come tonight and speak in support of our application. Um, so I, I did want to make him available for the board's benefit this evening. So I think we can we can hear um, from the gentleman um, and before we adjourn for the evening and then continue it to the next. Hi, hearing. my name is Jerry Myers. I, I do own property uh, next door to the proposed uh, change. Uh, frankly, I'm in full favor of, of that move. Uh, the main reason being water retention. Uh, it's my understanding, according to the plan, that water retention will be corrected as best as possible right now we have heavy rains it's like a river coming that way and if there's a retention over there in the direction moving it back towards eagle view into that lower uh, drain i think that would be the best thing for everybody for myself and unfortunately matt my neighbor couldn't be here tonight he had a business uh, situation that prevented him from being here but i have i have no objections at all I think the buffer will make a nice difference for aesthetically uh, between the residential and the commercial. And the water retention is a, is a big win for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll also note there are a handful of people affiliated with the church here tonight who would like to express their comments as well. Out of respect for the court reporter, and I understand you have another hearing immediately following this, I would ask that they keep their comments for public comment. That way we're not cladding the record with them if that's acceptable to the board. If you'd prefer to take their comments now, they'd be happy to make them. Um, I'll just leave it up to your solicitor, which one you would prefer. Yeah, it's, well, either way is fine. I mean, I had understood from our conversation that we were only going to have the one comment and then continue the hearing. Um, but it's it's really up to the it's up to the board, whatever their their preferences. Um, either is acceptable. Um, we can, I mean, what we can do is for tonight, let them speak during the public comment period. And then if there's something that you feel should be on the record, when we that would reconvene, fine. we can put it on the record. That would be oh. fine. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. So we'll adjourn the hearing, uh, and move on to the next hearing. And then we will at, at the end of the meeting, we will have a public comment period. Yeah. Um, at which point people can comment on anything, including the, the Calvary Church application. So the next hearing is um, the Tilson Infrastructure and American uh, Telephone and Telegraph uh, application uh, relating. And this is um, the applicants are requesting a conditional use hearing to construct and operate a wireless telecommunication uh, telecommunication communications tower consisting of a 160 foot high monopole and associated equipment on property located at exit 312 of the Pennsylvania Turnpike I-76, commonly referred to as the Downingtown Interchange. AT&T has asked Tilson Infrastructure to, to develop, construct, and own a technology suitable tower upon which AT&T would lease space for its broadcast equipment, thereby allowing AT&T to remedy the service deficiencies that currently exist in the area. The site is located in the township's PIC zoning district. A wireless telecommunications tower is permitted upon approval of a conditional use permit and variance for height according to the township zoning code. Uh, the the applicants are also seeking a variance to build the tower in excess of 120 feet tall, which would go in front of the township's zoning hearing board. Uh, is there anyone from uh, the applicants here this evening? Would you like to come up to the microphone and, and state your name? Sure. Good evening. Oh. 
very graceful, was it? My name's Doug Morrison. I'm a project manager for Pyramid Network Services out of Syracuse, New York, and I'm appearing on behalf of Tilson Infrastructure for their application for 160 foot unmanned wireless telecommunications as you spoke at the I-76-312 exit. Yeah. So I do have, before we we um, move further with the hearing, I do have some uh, board exhibits that I'd like to mark for the record. Sure. Uh, um, exhibit, board exhibit one is the application letter dated July 26th, 2023. Board exhibit two is the public notice um, to the daily local uh, of this hearing. Uh, board exhibit three is the proof of publication in the daily local that ran on August 27th, 2023 and September 4th, 2023. Board exhibit four is a budding uh, property owners notified of the hearing. A uh, board exhibit five is um, Tilson zoning drawings, which consists of 13 pages. Uh, Board Exhibit 6 is FAA Determination of No Hazard to Air Navigation Letter dated August 5th, 2023. Board Exhibit 7 is the FAA Antenna Structure Registration. Board Exhibit 8 is the EB Walsh Review Letter dated August 30th, 2023. And Board Exhibit 9 is the Draft Planning Commission Meeting Minutes dated September 6th 2023 uh, do you have any objection to to any of those exhibits being coming into the record yeah so because this is a conditional use hearing um there is the ability of interested parties to um who might be impacted by the use to seek party status um what party status allows a person to do is to fully participate in the hearing it allows them to cross-examine witnesses, present a case, and testify on the record. However, you do not need to be a party just to comment. If you have a comment you'd like to make about this, um, you don't have to be a party. There will be an opportunity for the public to, to comment on this application at the um, end of the hearing. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is if if you're not a party, if this is something that really is a, a direct effect on you, if you're not a party, you don't have the ability to appeal if you're unhappy with the result. Um, the appeal would go to the Court of Common Pleas um, in Westchester. Um, although just because you are a party doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to appeal. The standards are a little looser here at the township than they would be in the court. Uh, but if if you're not a party, then you you essentially waive your right to even be able to appeal. You can still make comments, um, and there's a twenty dollar fee um, for administration if you want party status. So, with all that said, is there anybody here tonight that wants party status with regard to this application? Okay. So then, um, at this point, I'll turn it over. To you if you have any presentation you'd like to make well um i i think we we uploaded the zoning drawings and just to give you a aerial overview it's a pretty straightforward project we're we're in the uh, pennsylvania turnpike right away the lease would be with them for their property uh tilson infrastructure would own it at&t is the carrier that's interested in in fixing a few deficiencies that they have with the um, FCC. Uh, and this, the RF engineers indicated that this would be an ideal location to not only serve and improve capacity, but also coverage for their network. Um, we're using a um, the exit as a staging area and we would simply put a culvert through the um, existing stormwater drainage with a 30 foot wide easement back to a 100 by 100 foot compound, erect the tower and the interior of the dotted lines that you can see is just simply the compound. You've probably seen them if you've dr drove them past. It's going to be a chain link fence with razor wire on the top only to protect 
so animals don't get in it or any stranger. I don't know why anybody would be walking in this area, but certainly it is not a um, an issue for people, pedestrians, if you would. So again, it's pretty straightforward. It's it's uh, it's an unmanned tele telecommunications facility. We've taken the liberty of designing it at 160, so we might also serve the other carriers if they found a need. Um, questions, concerns. So does the does the board have any questions or comments? Um, I don't have any questions. Do you have one question? You said AT and T is the carrier that's going to be utilizing the pole. Um, do you know? Does this include any improvements to their first net coverage or their emergency response capabilities? Well, I, I don't know the specific answer to that question. But when they approve, when because of the amount of hits we call them on on a certain tower, Gordon Road, for instance, so apparently they're having a high volume of traffic in that area. So what happens, you either lose a call or you don't get it at all. So when that happens, the RF engineers, radio frequency engineers sit in their thing and say, okay, how can we improve the network? Well, if we put something here, does it work for everyone? Does it improve our capacity? Does it improve our coverage? So to answer your question, I was gonna tell you, yes. It, somehow along the line that is going to get a little bit better it's this going to improve the network the entire network not just that little area and was there any interaction with any of the neighboring cell towers as far as like does it, does AT&T not utilize any of the other neighboring yeah, towers yeah yeah they do they do so that's this is that's the addition. capacity issue where they're at right now is overloading if you will so they have to figure out a better way to fix the network. So this is this is their solution. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Have a, a question about can, can you explain um, how how we're handling a situation of abandonment uh, and, and if if for whatever reason in the future maybe technology is and this no longer is something we need. Um, we'll bond whatever you want us to bond. Okay. Okay. If you want ten thousand. 20,000, whatever, we can bond that. And if that's acceptable at our township? Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. So, good. No, I don't. Are there any other? Oh. That's all. So, is there any public comment? Can you, can you come up to the microphone and introduce yourself? So my name is Susan Kiesling, and I'd like to know, I may have already missed my opportunity, but how do you, what qualifies someone as a party? So uh, someone who would be a party, uh, and, you, and you have it missed your opportunity, we can still allow you to, okay. if, if it's something. If someone, you have to be directly affected. Um, it's, that, that be, is a bit of a legal standard um, that I don't want to start giving you legal advice, but um, it generally it's, it's a, you're somehow directly affected by the proposal um and um, usually it has to do with how close you are to not always but usually how close you are to the the area where the work is being done okay uh, like if you're adjacent if you're adjacent property owner if you receive notice that's usually a good indication that you're you could be directly impacted okay um well, I would like to be considered. So, I, whatever process I need to go okay, through to so, become a party, I would definitely like to be. So, tell me what what is your what is your name? It's Susan Kiesling. Can you spell that? K I E S is in Sam L I N G. Okay, and where where do you reside? I reside in Lion Gate. And how close is where you reside to this proposed? Maybe. Work? half a mile mm -hmm. mile but my so here's the thing it does directly affect me because that cell tower is going to release emfs that will affect my family and i would like to be a party to be a part of that hearing and also to be able to present evidence now that i was not aware of this 
Well, this is the hearing. Okay, this is the hearing. This well, is the unfortunately, hearing. then I'm not. I'm unprepared. I wish I was more prepared for it because there's plenty of evidence. There's plenty of research about the medical, the biological effects of having something like that. With I'm gathering that is going to be carrying 5G, is my guess. And I also would like to know whether or not, like I heard you say, that it would impact or improve a little bit. Can that be quantified? I mean, I'd like to know, I'd like to actually have data to say, okay, if you're saying that you're building this thing and it's putting residents in the area at risk, potential risk, I'd like to know what are we talking about in terms of- All right, so let's be, let's go through the party status piece first okay. and then, yeah. you know, assuming that you become a party, you will have an opportunity to ask Great. your question. Okay. So my question for the applicant is, do you have any objection to this person becoming a party to the action? Theoretically, no, but I'm not an attorney either, so I'm, I'm going to um, have to leave that up. Um, if I have to hire an attorney to do this, we will, but we'd rather. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I don't want to tell you how to run your case. It's. Why would I object? Well, I, I, if you feel that you need more time to consult with an attorney, we can adjourn the hearing for this evening uh, and give you time and you can come back next month and we can do it then. I don't, I really don't want to rush you. Um, if you feel you need the time to, to consult with an attorney. Well, then we'll adjourn. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, um, is, is before we adjourn, is there, is there anyone else who would like to seek party status tonight? And, and, uh, Ms. Kiesling before, I'm sorry, before you leave, could I, could I actually get your, your specific address? Sure. It's 3808, um, Devin. I'm sorry, Davis Court, Chester Springs, PA. Davis Court? Davis Court. And your reason for wanting to intervene is because of the... the Concerns that I have about the effects of the EMFs that would be emitted from the tower, yes. Okay. And is there is there any... I just want to make sure we have the record. Sure. Sure, with all the reasons that... So that... So I'm going to take it under advisement tonight sure. and consider it. Sure. Um, are there any other reasons? No, that would be the primary okay. reason. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Is, is there anyone else who would like party status tonight? All right. So with that, then, unless the board has any additional questions that they'd like to ask, uh, we will. We can adjourn for this evening. Maybe I can help solve this issue now. The the. RF engineer is going to run an emission test that we do it for every piece of property and every site that we have. The FCC and FA, FCC will allow you a certain, let's just say 100 degrees. It's going to be probably less than 10. And it's also going to be 160 feet in the air, which nobody's going to climb up that tower and sit in front of that antenna. So the chances of any of that happening is minuscule. You get more emissions standing in front of your microwave, popping popcorn, than you do from a cell tower. Ms. Kiesling, I'm assuming that that does not resolve your request to be a party? Okay. I, didn't. Um, I, I understand that. I appreciate you, you making that statement for the record, and that's obviously... Um, I realize... You, you, we, we sort of morphed into testifying, and you've been making statements unsworn. So probably um, we can swear you now, and you can make your, and we can cover it now, or we can wait till next. Yeah, we'll, year. we'll just wait because. Okay, that's fine, and then we can do it. I'm sure you might want to prepare something now that you know what the issues are. Um, so with that, we will we'll adjourn tonight's hearing, um, and we will continue it on October 9th. Um, and and if for some reason, yeah, I've, if he's not available, what's the next one? And is it the first Monday of every? Yes. The way yes. Okay. So for now, for now, we'll we'll adjourn to October 9th. If for some reason on the ninth, we have to adjourn still further. We'll deal with it then. We may, um, 
if you if you have an attorney, if you could have them reach out to me and I can give you my information because we may need um, we we've we, from the time that we actually start the hearing now we have there is a there was a clock to start the hearing and now once the hearing starts there's a clock to finish it and I want to make sure if we need additional time that we go through the proper channels to get the extensions we need so so all right well well thank you. All right, so we're going to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear them. She doesn't need to stick around for the public comment. Um, I believe the public comment. I'm going to ask. No, I don't. I don't. I think I believe the public comment this evening will just be regular public comment. Will not be part of the record. So, so you're thank free you. to go. You're excused. <laughs> um. That concludes the business. I'm going to go ahead and read through the announcements before we open up the meeting uh, to the public for comments. Uh, Wednesdays at 9.30, Yoga in the Park continues here at Baird Park through the month of September uh, at 9.30 a.m. And on Wednesday, this is not on the agenda. It was missed, but there will be a Board of Auditors meeting on Wednesday, September 13th, right here at 4.30. On September 14th, the Historical Commission will meet at 7.30 at the Cadwallader House. On September 20th, the Zoning Hearing Board will meet at 7 p.m. That is a typo on your announcements there. It's not 6 p.m. It will be held at 7 p.m. to discuss the 207 Andover Drive side yard variants and the Tilson Infrastructure AT&T. Although, will that still be? It will be. Okay. All right. Um, September 21st, the Environmental Advisory Council will have their meeting at 7 p.m. September 25th, the Board of Supervisors will meet uh, here at 12 p.m. for our workshop meeting. We'll have another workshop meeting on this, our October 2nd at here at 12 p.m. Um, those are both talking about budget to just FYI for the new budget for next year. Um, on October 4th, the Planning Commission will meet here at 7.30 p.m. And on October 9th, the Board of Supervisors will have their regular meeting at 7.30 p.m. here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and open up the meeting for to the public for comments. I do have some people that signed up, so we're going to start with those. Just to remind everyone that there is a three-minute time limit on comments just to make sure that we can hear from everyone. Uh, so first up, I have Christopher... Marios? Manos? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm uh, Christopher Manos. I'm actually a new member of the congregation. And uh, it's my understanding that there are other uh, businesses that have been granted easements and amendments to the type of zoning and i just think that in keeping with the equal application of the law it would be very fair and just to give our congregation uh thoughtful consideration for this uh change thank you great thank you caroline engel is caroline engel here Hello, my name is Caroline Engel, um, live on Valley View Lane, and uh, I've been on here uh, several times, of course, uh, with concerns about the um, Lionville Station Farm, and um, a couple months ago, there was someone in the meeting who went where I think um, about a different topic, and the situation escalated, and there was a concern about like somebody I think um you said it was that a threat right and I just want you to know that um two of my neighbors who were here about the our concerns with Lionville Station Farm um two of them on totally different separate occasions said to me that uh, so this is how particular for you Mamie okay. um I just want to let you know that they specifically said to me they were both watching very closely 
what that individual was doing. And they were both planning a route to be able to take him down if something were to happen. And no, no, no disrespect to the, the police officers here, but I just want you to know that people care, even though we have a lot of concerns, there are people in the community here that are willing to protect others. And we know that it's the police officer's responsibility, of course, of course, but people in the public here may have been closer, you know, and, and um, so I just want you to know that two people um, unsolicited, we, we just talked about, we were concerned about that situation that happened and they were very concerned for you and willing to step up and help out in any way possible to protect you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, it was definitely a very tense situation and I have full confidence in the police officers that are here to maintain order in, in the um, meeting room. So, but I appreciate everybody looking out for each other. So it's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's the end of my list. It was very short. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to make public comment? Just raise your hand and I can call on you over here. And if you could just come up to the microphone and state your name, please. My name is Judy Dockstater, and I live on Whitford Road and have lived there for 53 years. Um, I want to just say that my husband started Euclid Ambulance in our living room. And look at what it has now grown to where we are protecting and caring for the people of Euclid Township. And I feel very strongly that. Calvary Chapel has that same sense of caring that we do wonderful things in terms of outreach, uh, not only locally, but uh, internationally. We do one meal where we feed our children in Africa for a year. We pack meals for them. We've packed meals for Ukraine. Um, we hold wonderful um, studies and encouragement and support groups within the township that allow Euclid Township residents to have that sense of belonging and belonging as a good neighbor. We'd like to be a good neighbor, and we would like certainly for you to consider that the zoning change would allow us to safely park people, pardon me, people on the same piece of ground that they're not crossing or doing something that put them at risk. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yep, sure, come on up. Hi, I'm Toby Chadsey, uh, Byers Road. I just wanted to know, is there anything uh, from Audubon and the Lionville Station farm that has come up since the last meeting where the where it was supposedly removed their their sketch plan so nothing nothing new is there's there's been no no there's been no new updates since the remove the withdrawal of their sketch plan okay uh, the rest is up to the school district i guess i don't know if anything's new with on well, that they've front they made it clear that they they will stick with this till uh the end of the earth so I guess so. I was just wondering if you've had any also any conversations with the school district about what could be possibly built there that would, you know, work for everybody, not just them. Yeah, I don't think that would be appropriate at this time to, for us to, to because they're in a active agreement with the developer. Yeah. So it's so they would have right. to 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 pull the plug on that to be able to talk to you about what could possibly be proposed for that property that would work for the community. That's my understanding. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Good Hi. evening. Raymond Parolo, uh, 4003 Franklin Court, Euclid Township. Uh, I've been attending Calvary Chapel, Chester Springs since 2004, and I am in support of the zoning change. I know it'll be a benefit our neighbor is here this evening. It's going to benefit him. 
Um, also, I'm involved in a lot of different areas of service at the church and um, additional safe parking would be a, a very good thing. Uh, I'm on the security detail, so I'm out in a lot, a lot <laughs> during events. And, um, you know, having had the privilege of serving on borough council in Conshohocken from 98 to 2004, I can appreciate the decisions that you make and thank you for what you do because I was on that side of the bench. Uh, I am in support of the zoning change. I just think it's the best way to go. And I'm pretty certain we can answer or actually satisfy the questions. I listened to the meeting. I wasn't able to attend the August meeting, but there were some concerns there. And I'm pretty certain that we can come to an agreement. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jesse Wollenwaver. I live on Devon Drive over across the street in Marchwood. Um, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about Calvary Chapel. I, I took the opportunity to watch the YouTube video of the last meeting, and, and I understand some of the concerns. Uh, some, of them, some of them that I noted were some tree clearing uh, for the parking areas, uh, maybe some, some landscape buffers, which sounds like you're in favor of. Um, you know, the acquired parcels don't have stormwater management now, and, and we've just heard that, that that's an issue. Um, so what we have here, I, I think, is really an opportunity to make some improvements. And as a, a practicing professional engineer, I know that the changes from the tree cover and land covers, that can be managed, and, and we can address those issues. Um, as far as tree clearing in general, that's, that's something that's important to me. I, I know the importance of it, and I've helped plant hundreds of trees with the Brandywine Conservancy down Dowland Forge, right by Creek Road. Um, so as, as far as I can tell, we have an opportunity here that the Calvary Chapel Church and the township to, to come to an agreement on some zoning changes to make this happen for the benefit of us all uh, as our local church community, as part of this much larger Euclid Township com uh, community. So I implore you to, to consider that change, the zoning change. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Renee Eklund. I'm a 25 year resident of Yukon Township. I do attend Calvary Chapel. I did review the August 14th meeting as well. Um, one of the things that I noted there was um, the, the church was asked to consider alternate schedules. Um, I, you know, personally, I think that's unrealistic. That's not what churches do. You know, churches have services on Sunday mornings or, you know, based on you know, the religious day of observance. Um, I think another proposal that was to consider um, utilizing nearby parking. So there's the Eagle View Shopping Center. There's also the Dollar General, the former Walgreens property um, for overflow parking. Um, and secure those agreements with those um, owners, et cetera. Just if you've driven by there and you know that there's a road that goes through that, it's not a secure option in any way for people who have to walk back and forth. So that's not a legitimate proposal, um, in my opinion, from a safety perspective. Um, the other thing too, is I would just say, you know, I think the church has definitely exhibited and has always exhibited a willingness to really work with uh, the neighbors and address all the concerns. So I think having a very actively willing, um, you know, participant is is key to the conversation. So would support, you know, the conversion of the, uh, you know, from uh, residential to commercial. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jamie Woolenweber, and I live on Devon Drive here in the township. Um, we've lived here for about six years, and I have attended Calvary Chapel for about eight. Uh, one of the things that actually brought us to the township was the close proximity to the church. Uh, we are active in the church, um, both Sunday services um, and a bunch of other ministries that they have. Um, it is well attended. If you're in that area on a Sunday morning, you'll notice that pretty quickly. Uh, we have over 2,000 people that come into the church over a weekend. Um, being able to meet the needs of the community, the families, and the friends of the residents here uh, of Euclid Township 
is very important to us. Uh, I've been an EMT here in the county for almost 20 years. Um, and so whether it's meeting the physical needs, the emotional needs, the spiritual needs, um, that is important. And being able to um, expand what we're able to offer and how we can support those around us is important to me. Um, and a, as a voting resident of the township, I hope it's equally important to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Julie English. Um, thank you for your time. I'll be brief. Um, I'm currently a resident of Euclid Township and have enjoyed living here for over 10 years. Um, I've attended Calvary Chapel for nearly as long. Um, I'm here to support the church's request to expand the parking lot, parking area. Uh, over the years, I've watched the congregation grow. This growth is primarily due to several factors. The church is open to the public and services, a diverse group of individuals and families in the congregation. Many reside in this township. The church's popularity, rapid and continual growth is primarily driven by the services and activities offered during the week and especially on Sundays. The problem is the parking lot cannot absorb the amount of vehicles attending services. In conclusion, please consider helping all the residents in the congregation and the general public that are looking to take advantage of the services and activities, but simply cannot park because the spaces are all occupied. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Come on up. Good evening, sirs, madams. Thank you for hosting uh, this event and help for helping the community uh, stay up to date on what's going on as well as have a voice. Um, I'm a resident of the township for eight years. My name is Jenna Dress. I live on 78 Woodland Drive, really close to Devon Drive. Um, I would like to strongly urge you guys to um, consider Calvary Chapel's proposal to expand the parking lot in fairness of the law. This is not the first time a proposal has come through, as you may have noticed, for the one proposal on 339 West Euclid Avenue to uh, merge or like convert the R1 zone to PC zone. It's not the first request. I would just ask, in fairness, with that request, you would consider this as well. I can also attest that from a practical standpoint of view, I honestly do believe expanding the parking lot would benefit the community as whole especially as I've been a part of both production ministry, worship ministry, and children's ministry. Our parking lot is so small and so full. When I have to chase after kids when they run out of the parking lot because they like to play Houdini. Um, unfortunately, there's like a lot of people just trying to get out of the parking lot because they want their Starbucks. So I end up having to yank kids like, yo, no, you're about to get hit, right? So it's just like that. It's like the parking lot is getting too small. I mean, it's a blessing to see so many people interested in coming to the Church of B community, but it's a little constricted. So I think with more space, it would allow the kids to run around for a bit for us to at least bring them back to a space that's safe without getting hit by cars. I actually was a witness to an actual car accident that happened at the parking lot in which it was a bit too full. People was watching where they were going while well, my friends, uh, Wade Lamaro, flipped another woman's uh, van. So we had to actually wait in the parking lot to call the county sheriff. They sent one of their guys over like the cops. So we had to take a statement and stuff. It's just like, it's just like, there's been repeat occurrences of that like week after week. It's not like every day, but it's like, it's like often enough where it's like we could truly benefit from the space. And I am fully confident that we could still preserve like the green in area to help it make it the urban area that it's supposed to be without like a dusty grimy city it will still be the township that we love just improved and better so thank you for your time thank you Hello, I am Paulette Lomaro. I live on 317 Misty Autumn Drive. I walk to the church because a lot of times it's very crowded and hard to park. And it just so happens that my son was the one that got in the accident in the parking lot of the church. 
because it was so crowded. So I thought I have a dual perspective of being somebody who likes to attend the church as well as somebody that lives in walking distance of the church. And I just feel like I can only speak for myself and the people that I know, but we feel that the church does so much good in our area. And there are so many things that um, make it a great safe place. And I'd hate to see parking and, um, and the lack of being able to change that to affect a, a community um, that supports so much stuff in Euclid. So that's it. Thank you. I'm Chris Engel, Euclid Township. Um, I have a couple of questions. At the, at the last meeting, when you read the letter from Audubon saying they were taking back the sketch plan, uh, a gentleman stood up and, and asked you if this now opened the door to you uh, as board members considering the possibility of making some tailored changes to the zoning of PIC so that we don't have to deal with the big massive buildings. Did, did I get that right? Okay. Um, and so my question is, uh, what is your process and timeline for starting that process of looking at zoning, changing the zoning, voting on changing the zoning and so forth? What I'm, I'm We've curious. already start. Just to answer your question, we have already started. Uh, we start usually by looking at other ordinances around the area, places that have similar situations that we are looking at, and our zoning department uh, goes through those ordinances and we try and craft something that would work for us. So we are already in that process, and once that would be sort of finalized, that would go to a vote at. It would go first to the planning commission and then to us. So. It's in the works, okay. in other words. And, and are there bookends for a rough timeline of how long that would take to go from uh, research to the proposal of a new plan? Um, we'll see. It took us about four years to do our chicken parties, but that went through a lot of back and forth. But I mean, in general, once it's in a, a really good draft, Sure. I, I can jump in. I mean, I, there's timelines and stuff. It's, I mean, I think I don't have a specific time frame for you. I think the challenge is looking at, essentially the when when you look at a, a township wide zoning and and um, particularly something of this scale, and when you're talking about a, this much property. Um, you, you have to look at the township as a whole and you have to realize the township, uh, for lack of a better analogy, is, is, is an ecosystem, right? So you start changing things and there's got to be, you, you have to provide, basically have to provide a sufficient amount of, of all uses. Um, and that, you know, and that subject, there's a lot of debate about what does it mean to have all uses? And we could spend hours talking about that. But so one of the things that we're looking at while we're looking at zoning changes what is not going to upset the balance of the ecosystem so it's i mean it so to, to say you know i i think it's it's months not years uh but it's it's really hard other than that to put a real definite time frame on it so what i'm hearing for you saying is it would be reasonable to expect that within a year's time we might see something proposed i, I think that's yes i think that's I I I mean that's a I'm pretty to save us all the trouble. Yeah, it's, it's, we, and, and look, saying, it's what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you? Doing? And it may be that at the end, you know, that's going to be there's there's going to be something paired. There's going to be something you know looked at. Um, whether you know it gets to the next step, whether it ultimately gets enacted, you know, that's I don't know. But I I can tell you the township's working on it. I I think within uh, in in less than a year, I would expect we know you know, what the options are and what we're looking at if we're going to do something, um, again, what it is. But yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I think a year probably is is more than enough time. Um, it's going to be famous last words that you're going to play the tape for me a year from now, but I'm just, but no, but I think that's, I think it's, it's, I mean, I, I like I said, I think it's months, not years. Um, I, I would be surprised if we're sitting here a year from now still saying we're working on something. 
as a concerned resident, I'm just trying to, the, the words we're working on it can be perceived as something very opaque. I, I can right? tell you that, that so, there is, so yeah. Any, anywhere where clarity can come, th come through, we as the residents, or I'm speaking for myself personally, I would graciously appreciate that. Yeah, no, and that's fair. And, and it is fair. And you're right. You know, we're working on it can be, uh, it has a whole spectrum. Um, right. So I, I understand the concern. But even if we were able to have dates of... Yeah, and, and the challenge is what, I mean, what some people are going to think is, oh, this, this is a great alternative. Other people are going to say, doesn't go far enough, goes too far. And that's that's part of the challenge. Sure. But as, as long as we can see a progression, yeah, then I think it would be a benefit for you guys as well as us, so that it's not a constant, you know, tug of war. Yep, understood. Anyway, thank you. Yep, thanks. Are there any other comments or questions? Oh, yeah. Hi, my name yes. is Suzanne Burkhardt. I'm at 587 Cricket Lane in uh, Eagle View. And what your comment about ecosystems, I feel like we have so much good use of open space here, but we have to care about our people. And I think we have to look at human beings and make sure that they're safe to be able to get to church when they need to get to church. And we are very caring about animals and open space in this township. So I think that um, it's an appeal to safety for our people. So I, I would appreciate it for Calvary Chapel Church. All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Lou Griffin, and I uh, live at 411 Concord Avenue right here. And I've been going to Cavalry Chapel for about eight years now, and I have worked keeping landscaping around the building for a little while. And um, I know that the church cares very much how they look, how they present themselves. Um, everything is prayed over. And as a Christian, I am very pleased at my church. It's the first place I've ever been that I can actually be proud of my family. And I say that as my Christian family, but we do care about people. And I think we need to think about people. And it's important to be looking good and doing the environment. I get that. But I think as the days are, and we're not dumb, there's a lot going out there in our environment that is People need hope, and our church is a place of hope, and I, I love to see that we can't find a parking spot. That means God's working, and that's important to me, and it should be important for our community because there's a lot of issues out there, and they need churches. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Hi, my name is Jessica Eamon. Um, I've been going to Calvary Chapel since 2018, and I started going by myself. Um, and since then, my whole family has been saved in more ways than one. Um, my marriage, too. And um, I also have a special needs little boy, and he's a part of the special needs ministry. And they do amazing things in so many ways. We're going to the aquarium at the end of the month. They're just taking us all. It's just a really amazing church to be a part of. And I would hate like for new people to move into the community that they go from church to church, try to find their place. And if the parking lot is so overcrowded, it could really deter them. And I would hate for any family to miss out on what Calvary Chapel has to offer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? In that case, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight.